So, as you know, all cells can actually be split into two categories. You've got your prokaryotic cells and the eukaryotic cells. And the difference between the two is that the eukaryotic cells have a nucleus and the prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus. Now, we've already talked all about eukaryotic cells and their structure, and you can re-watch those videos again by clicking here. Bing! But in this video, we're going to be talking about prokaryotic cells. Now, animals, plants, fungi, and protoctis are all made up of eukaryotic cells, but we believe that actually they all evolve these more complex organisms, organisms from these simpler uh, cells that lack a nucleus, which are called prokaryotic cells. So really, these are where life started, as far as we're concerned. Uh, as you will see from this presentation, prokaryotic cells have some features in common with eukaryotic cells, but they also have a lot of differences. All bacteria are examples of prokaryotic cells. So really, what we're going to be talking about in general uh, is you can pretty much uh, exchange the word prokaryotic cell and bacteria uh, at any point throughout this presentation because really essentially the majority of prokaryotic cells are bacteria and all bacteria are prokaryotic cells so really that's what we're going to be talking about. Now although these are basic organisms uh, they're actually really very important in biology and they're sometimes underrated but they're actually really really interesting. They can be found in a huge range of environments places like deep sea vents which are uh, extremely extremely hot um, they're called extremophiles, these bacteria that live in these conditions. So that's very, very interesting. They also keep our ecosystems going because they're very responsible for the decay of organic material. Um, a lot of them are pathogens, which means that they cause diseases, not only in humans, but in lots of other living organisms as well. Um, we can also exploit them uh, in biotechnology. We use uh, bacteria for things like yogurt production. A bacteria called lactobacillus is used to make yogurt. They contribute significantly to our health. We've got lots of them living inside our guts, our microbiome, which help with digestion and keep our guts healthy. Did you know that actually a one kilogram of your body weight is actually made from bacteria? And of your body, more cells are foreign bacterial cells than they are actually your own. You can actually exchange them very easily between each other, which is why people get ill if we exchange pathogenic bacteria. And actually, it's pretty gross, but do you know that actually one kiss, you can actually exchange up to a billion bacteria. So this topic on prokaryotic cells will be covered in the next two videos. This video is going to be looking at the structure of prokaryotic cells. And the next video is going to be on a little bit on antibiotics, looking at penicillin, how penicillin works. Uh, reproduction in prokaryotic cells and looking at pathogenic bacteria uh, of plants. Looking at their structure, you see that prokaryotic cells actually come in lots of different shapes and sizes, but that the two main types are ones called cocci, which means round, or bacilli, which means rod shaped. Now, this word usually forms part of their binomial name. Uh, for example, things like lactobacillus are rod shaped ones, or staphylococcus are round shaped ones. Now, the first thing to mention on uh, prokaryotic cells is that they're actually very, very small. Their diameter is between 1 and 5 micrometers. Now, if you compare that to a typical eukaryotic cell, they can be up to 40 micrometers, anywhere between 20 and 40 micrometers. So prokaryotic cells are a lot smaller. You can see that in this lovely picture here, which is of a squamous epithelial cell, a human cell. Um, you can see the pink nucleus in the middle there and then the cytoplasm surrounding it and all these little worm-like purple um, shapes here are actually lactobacillus bacteria. So you can see just how much smaller they are than a typical eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotic cells all possess a cell wall, a cell membrane, cytoplasm, DNA and ribosomes and some prokaryotic cells also uh, contain ca a capsule, some of them have infoldings of their membranes um, some have plasmids, uh, flagella, and pili. So we'll cover all these structures in this presentation. So starting with the cell wall. Now the function of the cell wall is to prevent the cell from bursting and it gives bacteria its shape. It's made of a substance called murine, which is a peptidoglycan. Now peptidoglycan is a combination of poly, uh, polysaccharides and proteins. There are actually two types of cell wall and we'll be discussing them uh, later on in this presentation. The cell membrane is pretty much exactly the same as you'd find in a eukaryotic cell. And again, we've done a video on that one, which you can watch by clicking the link here. Boo. 
The cytoplasm is also very, very similar to eukaryotic cells. I suppose the major difference really here is that there is no cytoskeleton. Remember, prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus. Uh, they do still have DNA. It's very important that they still have DNA. It's one single chromosome. Uh, it's not in a membrane, like the nucleus. It doesn't have an envelope around it. That's why there's no nucleus here. Uh, it's just free in the cytoplasm, this nucleoid floating around. And it's not associated, associated with any proteins. Uh, normal eukaryotic DNA is associated with uh, histone proteins. These, this DNA is not. It's what we call naked DNA. Prokaryotic cells also have ribosomes. Um, like eukaryotic cells, but there is a difference here. They're actually smaller than the ribosomes found in eukaryotic cells. They are um, what we call 70S ribosomes rather than the 80S ones found in eukaryotic cells. And these ones are made up from a 30S and a 50S subunit. Their function is the same as in eukaryotic cells, which is, that's right, protein synthesis. Now, some prokaryotic cells also have this extra layer around the outside called a capsule or a slime layer. Um, it's made from various different molecules such as starch or glycolipid, and it protects the bacteria from drying out, which is called desiccation, which uh, is very useful in certain environments for certain bacteria. Uh, it can also help the uh, bacteria from being discovered by the immune system, and it prevents infection by various viruses like the bacteriophage, which we're gonna be looking at a bit later on in this presentation. It can also help them adhere to certain surfaces. So a capsule can be very, very helpful to the survival uh, of certain prokaryotic cells. Some prokaryotic cells' um, membranes in actually fold inwards, um, and that sort of increases the surface area, which is probably for some kind of um, metabolic reaction. Uh, it was thought it was for respiration instead of mitochondria, because obviously prokaryotic cells don't have any membrane-bound organelles. Um, but now it's maybe thought it might be more likely for um, photosynthesis and photosynthetic bacteria or nitrogen fixation. Now some prokaryotic cells also have small circular loops of DNA called plasmids. Now plasmids are very, very interesting. They can actually be transferred between bacteria in a process called conjugation and they code for a specific trait. Some bacteria have a flagella for movement, almost like a little tail that comes out the back of the bacteria. And it's made from uh, some protein fibers called flagellin, which are spun around like a motor. It's a spiral protein fiber, and it gets spun around by a little motor protein, uh, which helps with the movement of bacteria. Other bacteria also have these little things called pili around the outside, uh, and these are used to help bacteria reproduce in a particular way, and also communicate uh, in, a, in a process called conjugation, where they will be able to link together, join together, and exchange these small little plasmids. So a lot of exam questions will actually get you to compare the structure of prokaryotic cells with eukaryotic cells. And uh, a good way to do that is with a table. So why don't you pause the video here and copy and complete this table. Now, as already mentioned in the video, there are actually two types of prokaryotic cell wall. This was discovered by a Dutch scientist called Christian Graham in 1884, and he developed this specialized staining procedure, which showed up that there were these two types of uh, bacteria. So one of which he called Gram-positive bacteria, uh, and one which are called Gram-negative bacteria. Now, Gram-positive bacteria have a very, very thick layer of peptidoglycan, which contains lots of stuff called tychoic acid. Now this traps a particular part of the stain called crystal violet, which means that these end up being a lovely purple color. The gram-negative bacteria have a much thinner layer of peptidoglycan, um, and they also have this thing called the outer membrane. Uh, and that means that actually the crystal violet stain gets washed away very, very easily. Now they will pick up a stain after they've been washed uh, in the staining process called saffronin and that gives them a more kind of red pink pinkish color. So you should know the basic sort of steps for this staining procedure. Some examples of gram-positive bacteria, things like lactobacillus or micrococcus luteus, and examples of gram-negative bacteria are salmonella, salmonella and E. coli.